St. Albert Alliance <laughs> Church, and welcome to the pre-show. Good morning, everyone. We are so glad that you're joining yeah, us today. We are. We didn't know our mics were live a little bit earlier than expected, <laughs> but hey, we're having a good time. It's a great morning here at St. Albert Alliance Church, and the weather is warmer today. It and is. from the forecast, and hey, if it changes, don't blame me, but I don't see snow for today. That's all I'm going to say, just for today. No, I know there's snow on the ground, <laughs> was, Felipe, thank like... you, but there's no snow coming down from the sky today, is what, that's I, true, is what that's I looked true. at today, so Man, should be okay. I love the nice weather you uh, know? me too me too oh. it's it's good I'm, I'm glad to finally see sun more often yeah not have to defrost my windows every morning man a couple so days good. i'm excited for so good yeah my windows are frosty this morning spencer my, mm, mine were too but they weren't like frosted enough that like my windshield wipers didn't just like oh, I had to they were like foggy morning. yeah i just mm. scraped mine this morning mm. I, but where my park is 
where my car is parked is in the shade. So, anyways. Ah, uh, makes regardless. sense. Makes sense. Thanks for tuning in, everybody. Oh, yeah. Amazing. Yeah. Man. Wow, so good. <laughs> and Brittany's here for the whole time. That's true. We actually true. get to have an entire pre-show oh together my goodness. for the first time it's in weeks. It's kind of been a while because a been. lot of times I'm running around doing other things. Yeah. I honestly didn't even think I was going to make it in time for this one. I know, I know. It's so okay. So if you weren't here last Sunday, it was Easter, first Woo! off, which was a lot of fun. How Easter? was your Easter? Oh, so good. Oh, yeah. my goodness. Oh, spending time with family. Yep. Such great food. It was oh, a great time. Food's great. And hey, if you weren't here for the service, oh. we got a cool recap coming to you today. Yes, we do. In service. It's after the worship set, after communion, which is also a great segue. Communion is today, uh, which yes. we'll remind you again at the end of the pre-show. Yes, we will. But hey, you got some time, but you know, get something ready. And whether you're yes. watching live, joining us live right now, or you're watching this sometime during the week, we still encourage you to be a part of that if that's yes, something you feel do. called to do. Oh, so good. So easy. Okay, we want to connect with you. Yes. And there's a lot of great ways, especially today, to connect with you. Mm-hmm. You might be wondering, why, Just Why is today a great day to connect? It's because we're starting a new sermon series. We are. What is this new sermon series, Brittany? Uh, we are starting our Everyday Rhythms sermon series. Yes. And so this is essentially, we're going through just the ways to intentionally bless people. Yeah. And, yeah. oh, it's so good. We are going to, yeah, there's small group plans for that. There are, yes. There's lots of stuff, and we're just so excited to see what God's going to be doing through this new series. Yeah, yeah. If I can get Sean, Sean, can you go grab me one from the from over there? An Everyday Rhythm pamphlet, please, because I want to show you what this is. We have this really cool pamphlet. Well, that was wild that I just watched that. <laughs> uh, we have this really cool pamphlet. Oh, and bookmark, man, the whole team's coming to help us out on the pre-show because wow, we were just not wild. prepared. Thank you so much. Okay. <laughs> So we have these bookmarks here that I think are really important. Uh, yeah. It shows the blessed practices. So begin with prayer, listen yeah. with care, eat together, serve with love, share your story. And who are you blessing? So you can write some names in the back. And so these are like the core things. Yes. There's going to be mo- it's there's going to be more than just this happening. Yeah. But these are the core things that we're talking about in this Everyday Rhythm series. And so these are actually like when you walk into the auditorium. They are there. They're oh, going to be great. handed to you this morning. Yeah. If you didn't grab one because you were super early getting into the auditorium, first of all, good job. Yeah. I'm a big early person. Yeah. I love that. But you should make sure to grab one of these because they are so good. They are. So helpful for this And it's series. just a nice little bookmark. It is. Just fit in your Bible or, or maybe another Man. book you're reading so you can always stay reminded. Yeah. And then we also have our like this small group stuff. And this package. is thick. Okay. Yes. This is a big one that we... Oh, it has lots of stuff. Okay. It has lots of stuff. And it's all like this one. I think I haven't fully looked through this one in depth, but I think that it's a little bit different from our Mm. other, our past couple small group curriculums. Mm. Um, In terms of those ones, we've primarily been doing discovery Bible method stuff. This one is a little bit different. There's kind of more um, things for discussion for more actual like, worksheet type thing so yep. that you can actually be walking this out and yeah living so it good. it's everyday rhythms it we is. gotta live this out every day yeah and so if you're here in person right now in the auditorium or you're just watching uh you can get this we have this at our welcome desk as yep. well as we have it available online yeah so wherever you can i highly recommend grabbing this especially for small groups that'll be working through this this yes. is your best tool to work through the curriculum together so so man, good both things great for you to pick up that's the sermon series it is everyday rhythms amazing and with that small groups are small happening groups. which are like one of the best ways to connect here at St. Yes. Albert Lions Church and with small groups paired with it really well are C3 groups. Oh my goodness. Right? I love C3 groups. Casual connecting communities. Yes. And it's such an easy way to invite people who might be new to church. Yep. Might be new to someone in your life, maybe a new coworker, a new neighbor. Uh, C3 groups are, you get to do fun stuff together. Yes, you do. And like, that's pretty much it. That's the whole point. And yeah, it's just like whatever you enjoy doing, mm-hmm. whether that's, you know, there's a basketball C3 group, yeah. there's um, there's a handicraft one, so like yes. knitting, crocheting, yep. things yep. like that. Yep. There are all sorts of C3 there's groups. So if there is like literally anything that you would want to get involved in with like, you're like, I want to connect with people, yeah. our C3 groups are the way to do that. Because, and I'm sure you might have something you enjoy, someone else is going to enjoy it too. We got basketball. We've chatted about photography, you know, we're leaning on that one. Maybe, you never yeah. know. Uh, so I encourage you, if that is something you want to do, reach out to Pastor Pam. Yes. She'd love to get you started. I mean, when we came up with the basketball idea, it was up and running like a week. It's true. Like, Pam's it was like, let's get wild. this going. And I'm like, okay, let's All do right. this. And it's been great. We've had lots of people coming out. So I encourage you, C3 groups are the best way to get connected in this church in so many different methods. And yeah. 
you can easily find all the information. Where would we send them, Brittany? Oh, my goodness. Our website. Yes. So our website is staalliance.org. Yeah. Specifically, if you go on, it would be staalliance.org slash group life. Yes, it would be. That would be where you find all of our group stuff, whether that's, like, whether you're looking for a small group. Yeah. Whether you're looking for a C3 group of just connections. Mm -hmm. um, whatever you're looking for. Yep. If you want to get connected, that is where you go, is our it groups is. page. Yes. Oh, my goodness. It's the it's the best place. Yes. And the cool thing is, on our website, if you go to the events tab, mm -hmm. we have a calendar view, and it shows you all the C3 groups oh that are goodness. happening. Oh, my goodness all the different ministry groups that we have going yep. on here. Like, hey, maybe you're new to the church and you have some kids and you're like, man, is there a youth group that we can send them to? There right. absolutely are. Yeah. And the website's the best place to find out all the information. It's true. Or we are on like every social media. That's so also true. So if you true. want to DM or direct message us on any of those, we'd be happy to message you back there too. Yeah. Okay, we got oh, TJ man. saying good day, eh? Thank you, TJ. That's very Canadian of you. And the official prince. You guys are legends. Amazing. I'm sick today, so I'm watching oh, Dave from home. Hey, I'm I sorry hope, you're sick. Yeah, hope you start to feel better soon. Yes. But thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah. It's pretty fun doing the pre-show together. Yes, it is. Uh, good morning, barbecue group. Brent, I think that's a brilliant idea. <laughs> I think you need to, yes. you know, spearhead that and Please make that a thing. Please do. Oh, my goodness. I would love to show up to a barbecue group. That would be great. Yeah. I feel like... I'm still learning my barbecue skills. Mm. I would love to learn from some people that are really good at it. I'm still at the point where if I try to barbecue a hamburger, it usually turns into a hockey puck. We got problems. <laughs> we'll make it. He, he's, we both go to the Brent. We go to Brent's barbecue group and we we learn. Perfect. Brent, I think this has to happen. Thank you. I appreciate that. Okay. Something uh, that happens here a lot. It's St. Albert Lions Church. Oh my goodness. Something we try to celebrate as often as we can, and it's something that like a group of people we could not. Do oh, without of is yes. our volunteers. Our volunteers. Yeah. Oh my goodness. This is like I and I think we talk about this a lot, but I, think I so. don't think that it's talked about enough. No, it of can't how be. much we appreciate our volunteers. Yes. We have got such a great group here. We do. Like, whether it's our youth ministry volunteers, whether it's our kids ministry, what whatever you or our frontline team, yeah, yeah. fresh ground, all of the areas, yeah. we are so grateful for you. We are. And because of that. We want to have a special night just to appreciate We you. do. And so this is happening on May 3rd. Yep. We are having our volunteer appreciation night. Yep. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Josh, what is the theme for this? I've heard it's called Rootin' Tootin'. I love it's it. It's Western themed. Yes, It's going it to be is. a good time. We get to serve you. Uh, we get to bring food and dress yep. up and all those kind of things. It's going to be a great night. If you're here for last year and saw our 80s night, oh my goodness. this is just another follow-up. It's going to be another phenomenal evening yes. where we get to celebrate all the amazing hard work you do, the amazing gifts and talents you bring to our team that we could not do this without you. Oh, so good. We absolutely love you guys, yes. and we want to appreciate you. Yes, we absolutely do. Okay, yes. on the volunteer note, yes, we have something really cool coming up in a few months from now. I don't remember the exact date. I think it's, it's June 9th. June 9th. Thank you. That is Love St. Albert. So we love St. Albert. ran this last year. Yep. Huge hit. People oh loved goodness. it. And we had about 100 volunteers from what I was told. I think, yeah. We, we had, had a we had, lot. We had a lot of volunteers. This year, we're running it again, running it back. Yep. We need 150 volunteers Oh, my or goodness. More. And so it's a big shout out. Like, I just encourage you, if this is something you want to be a part of, oh. reach out to... Almost anyone on team, we'll get you situated because we want you to be part of that. And I think, so signups for that begin on April 14th. Yes. And so for that, like after the service, we are going to have probably at our welcome desk, yep. there will be people. So that's yep. next week. Yeah. If you want to sign up for this and like there's, you know, you can do, um, there's petting zoo, there's there are food so services many. if you love just like serving food. Or just um, basic setup, like we need tables and setup, chairs and stuff. Down. Yeah. We do, like we run games, we yeah. do yeah. Um, balloon animals and like yeah. uh, face paint, all that kind of yeah. stuff. If you yeah. have any special passion for any of those things, please let us please know. Do. Please, please do. Please let us know because it is so good. We would love to have you there. And like Josh said, yeah. we have... We need so many volunteers. So many people. But we know that our church family, we can do it. Yes, absolutely. God's good, and he will make that happen. And yes. so we encourage you. It's a great way to show love to our community. Mm -hmm. Like, it's one of the best ways to show love to our community is by serving them in a way where they get to come, have free food, bring their families, play lots of games, and have a great time. Yeah. So I encourage you. Oh. Sign up is next Sunday. Yeah. But start thinking about it now. Start talking to people. Start coming up with what you want to do for that. I know. Well, and that's the thing about Love St. Albert is it feels like it's really far away. But because it's coming it's still, up fast. It's not until June, so technically it's a ways away. 
But it's going to come fast. I mean, and April, May, June. Like, exactly. we're almost there already. Like, we we would love to get signups for this we would. right now. Because, well, next week. Next week. <laughs> because, yeah, it's coming fast. Yes, it is. Okay. We got about four minutes left. I know the timer is different. We're, uh, we're showing a video early in the service today. Yes, we are. Uh, so, let's talk about merges and event happening. Oh, my goodness. April 19th. 8 p.m. Cost us $25. Yes, What it are is. they doing? Oh, my goodness. Okay. For those of you that don't know, I work with our junior high here at the You're church. You do. You're a spectacular job. Thanks, Josh. You're welcome. And we are going, on April 19th, we are going to the Edmonton launch pad, the one on the west end, for Neon Night. That sounds amazing. And so what this is, is it's the cost for that is $25. Yep. Um, they, like Josh said, it's happening 8 to 10.30. Pick yep. up and drop off are happening at the launch pad. And what that is, man, they are going to turn the lights off. There's going to be, like, <laughs> um, a DJ. There's going to be glow-in-the-dark stuff. Wow. It's going to be so much fun. $25, this event is going to be an absolute blast. It's going to be amazing. I wish I was either a merch leader or a merch, merch student because I would go to this for sure. Yeah. Also, like, fun fact that... Josh probably knows about me that a lot of you oh, probably yeah, I do. don't know yeah, about yeah. me. Yeah, I know, yeah, I know exactly what she's going to talk it, to you about. What is it, Josh? Your, your jumping <laughs> height, your verticality. So fun fact about me, I... Practically zero. I can jump approximately half an inch. Yeah. Okay? My jump is not great. So... I love going to the launch pad and things like that because actually, then I can jump like normal people. You can jump like normal so, people. So, man, you should come to the launch pad if you were in grade 7 to 9 and you can see how great I can jump. <laughs> and it's a great time. I can fact check that she literally has like a half inch vertical. Yeah. Which is rather incredible, but hey, we still love having you on team. So thank that's you, all thank good. you. We don't base our teammates off of how high they can jump. <laughs> That would be a crazy <laughs> metric to work with. That's okay, funny. Okay, we've got a few things left with two minutes left in the pre-show. Yeah. First things first, you might all be wondering, or maybe you're not. That's totally okay. What's been going on Deep Dive? We've taken about a two-week break so far yeah. with Easter and everything and with the movement of people and stuff. Just taking a bit of time off, yeah. which is totally okay. Uh, but got some news for you for the month of April. It's actually going to look a little different mm -hmm. for the month of April. So our normal sit down on the couch, Kirk and somebody kind of style, is taking a bit of a hiatus okay. for just April. It'll be back up in May. So for this month, you're actually going to be see a bit more of the best of moments. There you go. So I'll be presenting those to you where you get to watch some things. Because we've had like over 60 episodes of the, of the of Deep Dive. And so for many of you who maybe are new to the church or haven't watched Deep Dive before, we've got lots of previous episodes for you to check out. And I think Deep Dive is a great way to just get connected and... Um, and learn more about God and, and your life and how to work it's through true. things. And it's, it's a great resource for you to have. And it always or usually really pairs well with the sermon series. That's the thing. Oh, man. If you come out of the sermon and you're like, I, I just more. wish that I could learn more about this, man, that's how. Like, yeah. watch the deep dives. Yeah. Then if you have questions, you can still come to us on yeah. staff. But, yeah. oh, my goodness, yeah. those are great resources. Yeah, and it's available both as a podcast and on video form on YouTube. So different format happening this month, but something we're just equally as excited for. And we'll get back to the usual yeah. uh, come, uh, come May, which Amazing. would be great. So, so good. look forward to that. And you might be wondering, where is Deep Dive? It's on the YouTube channel. Which, if that you're watching live right now, that's where it is. Now, okay. we want to just really quickly let you know. Yes. If you are in the auditorium yes, right Brittany, now. let's go. Today is Communion Sunday. Yep. And so if you didn't grab one of the little communion cups on your way in, come and grab one. Yeah. Also, if you're watching from home, communion is going to be happening during the worship set. You've got a little bit of time. But yep. just grab some stuff at home. Yeah. Because that's a great, we would love to have you participate yes. in that. Yes. And if you're sitting on a term right now, which, hey, welcome. We're glad yes. that you're here. We need you to move in. Yes. Fill in those seats. Let those extra thing. Let those extra seats around you be available for people. So good. We want that to be as, as hospitable and ready for people coming in a little bit later than normal. Okay, yeah, everybody. Please do. Have Thanks a for great the pre -show. day. We'll see you next week. <laughs> Bye. Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us for this update yeah. for April. We have a lot of fun things that we want to talk to you about. But first, we've just come through Easter weekend. So, oh my goodness. Brittany, how was your Easter? It was so good. Yeah. I got to spend some time with family. What, what did you do? Nice. Again, all about family, yeah. which is one of my favorite things about the holidays. Oh. Any holiday is to be with family. I put Easter baskets together for my oh. adult children. <laughs> that is so fun. You're never too old for a good oh. Easter basket. I love or it. Or a hunt, like an yes. Easter egg hunt. That's so, what my family does yeah. too. Yeah, it's fun. Oh. So good. Yeah, really good. <laughs> we hope that you all had a really enjoyable Easter weekend as well. Amazing. Yeah. Oh, well, we want to just talk to you guys about, you know, what's happening, what's upcoming around the church. Um, this first thing is we have 
a really exciting new sermon series starting. Yeah. And so this is our Everyday Rhythm series. And this is just, we're learning how to intentionally bless people. And it's just gonna be so good. Um, in that, we have some small group guide stuff coming out because we love to, you know, send that out so we can get together and intentionally dig deeper into the stuff we're talking about on yeah. Sunday mornings, um, just in small groups. Absolutely. So if you'd like to be a part of a small group and you're not already in one, mm -hmm. you can um, get more information on our website and you can register on our website as well. And speaking about registering for groups that you are gonna to wanna to be a part of, we also have C3 groups that are like continuing throughout the spring. One that we have starting in the middle of April is an acrylic painting C3. Oh my goodness. And it's for men and women. If you are a painter or if you just wanna learn how to paint and have fun with other people doing something crafty and creative, join our acrylic painting C3. And we also wanna say, if you have a hobby or an activity that you enjoy doing, like kayaking or... Basketball. Basketball or there's something else that was, it's gone. It was right in my mind and now it's gone. All of the things. What do we do in the spring and summer? Like anything outdoor related, barbecues. Yeah. Like we do an ultimate yeah. frisbee one. Absolutely, these so things good. are phenomenal. Talk to Pastor Pam, send her an email, talk to her here in the lobby on a Sunday morning. She'll want to get you set up as a C3 like host yeah. so that people can get together and do fun stuff with you that you enjoy doing. Yeah. So, oh, yeah. it's so really good. good. I love it. And the one thing I love too about these groups is most of them, I mean, all of the ones that I've been to, even if you don't have much experience with things like that, but you are just like, I wanna connect with people, you can just go and connect with people that maybe enjoy some of the, some of the same things that you like doing. Absolutely, no so. expert skill levels required. No. None at all. No, so, it's yeah. so good. Check it out. Amazing. Yeah. Awesome, we also wanna to talk to you about this coming summer, we have our Love St. Albert Festival. And so this is happening on June 9th. This is 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. And oh my goodness, and this is so will, fun. It will replace our regular yes. Sunday services. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it is going to be so yeah. good. There's, you know, carnival games. There Last year there was a petting zoo, yeah. all sorts of things. There's food. Yeah, fun food. Oh, I love it. Yeah, now, so good. But the one thing we need for that is volunteers. And lots of them. Oh, so <laughs> many volunteers. And so we are look. even though that might seem like it's really far off right now, we are looking for volunteers for that. And so maybe you like to serve food or maybe you are really gifted in tying balloon animals or like face, face painting, painting, things like that. Mm -hmm. Last year we did glitter tattoos. I wasn't very good at it, but like <laughs> I tried. <laughs> um, it was so good. So yeah. you should definitely come and you know, talk to us or yeah. I think we're gonna be doing signups after Sunday services, right? Yes. Yeah, if yes. you're in the lobby. Yeah, oh. so you can sign up on a Sunday morning. Yep. We'd love to get you connected to volunteer. Yeah. And speaking of volunteers, yes. if you volunteer and serve at St. Albert Alliance Church, we want to celebrate you. We do. So on May 3rd, we are going to be having our annual volunteer appreciation. Yay. So if you serve at St. Albert Alliance Church, you can sign up for the volunteer appreciation. The registration will be open at the beginning of April and we want all of you to come out. Mm -hmm. It's gonna be a fun night, fun food, some fun oh. entertainment, and we just wanna take some time to celebrate all of our amazing volunteers here at St. Albert Alliance Church. So make sure you register for that and come on out. And if you have any questions at all, you can talk to any one of us on staff yeah. about that. We'd love to get you connected there. Oh, so good. Actually, last year was my first volunteer appreciation that I was at because I wasn't yeah. on staff yet. I was still a volunteer. And oh my goodness. This is like my favorite ever. It is ever. So, so fun. <laughs> so if you volunteer here at the church, Please you should come. definitely come because yeah. oh, it is so much fun. Yeah. So fun. We love you. Yes. You're awesome. And we want to celebrate you. Oh. Yeah. Well, yeah. Thanks for joining this monthly yeah. update. Oh, it's been Lots great to of talk fun about things. things. Yeah, yeah. Great things to connect in. So, so good. April's going to be a blast. It is. Oh my goodness. Kay. Thanks for joining us. Bye. Bye. Well, good morning, everyone. Welcome to the Sunday after Easter Sunday. Isn't that exciting? Can you imagine the week after the disciples, after Resurrection Sunday, that next week, there were a guy like, it's true, and he's still alive. Well, it's so exciting to be here together with you today. I want to read you something out of Psalm 66. It says, shout, to, uh, shout for joy, oh, uh, pardon me, 
Shout for joy to God, all you earth. What's neat is all over the world today, people are shouting joy to the Lord. They're shouting praises to God. And then the psalmist goes on to say, sing the glory to his name. Give him the glorious praise and say to God, how awesome are your deeds. And that's what we want to do this morning as we come together and we celebrate who Jesus is. We celebrate each other. We celebrate what it means to be part of God's family. And not only his, his family here, but his global family. The whole earth comes together to praise the Lord. And this is really exciting. We just stand together as we worship the Lord together.
new song today. The youth and young adults actually did it last week. And when I heard they were doing it, I was like, oh, you gotta do that here. And I was just reminded of um, about a year ago, how Jesus just used this song to minister to my heart. My daughter had just moved to Grand Prairie to work for the summer. And the forest fires got really bad up there soon, right soon after she got there. So she starts sending me pictures of, you know, the orange eerie sky and, and the news reports are all saying how it's quite close to town. And, and I'm like, I just go full mom mode, of course. Right. And I'm, I'm, kind of panicking and stressing out. I'm like, you know what, just come home. Like, I think, forget the job, come home and let's, you know, we can just be together. And, and she's like, mom, like, I think some of the roads are closed between here and there. Like, maybe I could get there. Be, it'd be a bit of a workaround. And, and so then I'm just full blown panic, like, and, I, and feeling helpless. And this, the words of the song just came to my heart in that minute. And it says, I trust in God, my savior, the one who never fails. He will never fail. And right away, it's like, whew, right? I forgot, I forgot. I can't take care of her, but he can. He is with us in every minute, in every everything we're facing. We're not alone. That doesn't mean hard things don't happen. We all know they do, but we're never alone. And he's right with us. And, you know, sometimes in those moments, we have a hard time remembering that he loves us. And, and what I love about Easter and, and what we celebrated last weekend, and we're going to have communion today, is it reminds us to look at the cross, right? And when we look to the cross, we remember what Jesus did. He gave his life for us. He gave everything for us. And if you ever question if he loves you, remember the cross, because that's how we know he loves us and we can trust him. He's got our best in mind. So we're going to sing this together. We're just going to sing it over our own hearts. We're going to sing it over each other's hearts to remember that our God can be trusted.
where God is and he seems far away. But in one of the Psalms, it says, if you seek me, you will find me if you search for me with all your heart. So we're gonna just sing this out together. Thank you for all you've done for us. Help us to trust you more, Jesus.
talks about our forgiveness is covered by the blood of Jesus Christ. Yeah, if you'd like to sit, I guess you can sit. <laughs> That's a real lazy people here in the 11 o'clock service. The <laughs> serious here. Come on, you guys. The Bible says, and on the night that Jesus was betrayed, the Lord Jesus took some of the bread and he gave thanks to the Father. And he broke it. Let's pray together. Father, thank you for your body that was broken for us. Thank you on that same night that you were betrayed, you follow through on what the Father asked you to do. But you went to the cross. Your body was broken. Your blood was shed so that we could have forgiveness of sins. So that we could enter into a new relationship with you, a new covenant, a new agreement. We thank you for that, Lord. And it says that he broke it in pieces and said, this is my body was given to you. Do this in remembrance of me. Let's take the body. And after that, they had supper together. They visited, and they chatted, and they had a great time not knowing what was to come. But Jesus knew. And it says, in the same manner, he took the cup of wine after supper, saying, this cup is a new covenant between God and his people, an agreement confirmed with my blood. Do this in remembrance of me as often as you drink it. For every time you eat this bread and drink this cup, you are announcing the Lord's death until he comes again. Let's take the blood of Christ. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for all that you've done for us. Amen. Let's just content, stand and continue singing.
show us that you love us. We thank you that you're with us in everything we face, Lord. We love you. Amen. You may be seated. He is risen. He is risen. Amen. And we praise his name together today. Today is a day of new beginnings. To begin to live out that new beginning, you have to recognize your need for Jesus. Do you see yourself as someone who needs Jesus? They began to see the cross differently. Not as a symbol of defeat, but as a symbol of victory. He chose to die on the cross for you and me. And when he did, he took all of the sin, all of the things that we've done in our life that have gone against God's holy way of living, all of the things that we've done, whether they be large or whether they be really small, that he took all those things on the cross. The cross became a symbol of forgiveness, a symbol of victory, that sin does not define you. Yeah, I, I just want to publicly declare my love for Jesus and my commitment to him. And I think Taking a step and being with God the whole time is like showing your full devotion to God as a Christian for the rest of your life. started um, digging deep into myself and is this for me and all I got was yes I'm ready to be fully with him and commit my life to him wasn't that fantastic like there's two things in the scripture that Jesus says, here's what I want you to do re to remember this. And one of them is water baptism, which is what we did last week, and the other is communion, which we did today. And it's so exciting. Last week, we had uh, over 1,200 people come and join us for the Easter Sunday service. That was fantastic. We, yeah. We had, a serve, we had three services. We had one service in here, the 11 o'clock or 9 o'clock service. And then 11 o'clock, we had a service in here. And we had another service doing the same thing in the gymnasium with the youth and young adults. That was exciting, just seeing, seeing people come together and worship the Lord together in this auditorium and hear God's word and make commitments to the Lord. And uh, then we saw people in the gymnasium doing the same thing, hearing the word of God, worshiping the Lord together, making commitments to serve the Lord. And then we saw the same thing in the kids' wing as the kids were hearing the stories of Jesus, worshiping the Lord together and making little commitments in their lives to follow Jesus. That's so exciting. We saw 12 people baptized. That was exciting. And over this last season, we've had many, many baptismal services. Now, folks, we can do this because of your faithfulness in giving, in your tithes and your offerings. And this part of our service, this part of our worship service where we worship and express our gratitude and love to God is where we give in our tithes and our offerings. And it's through your giving, it's through your generosity, it's through your obedience that we're able to do all of these things. And we're not, not just things within the church and, and part of the church family, but we're, we're able to do things in our community where we're able to serve our community well. And so I want to thank you for that, but also want to encourage us to continue to be obedient in our giving and our tithes and offerings as an expression of worship to the Lord. I want to pray together, and as we pray, we're just going to give it as a worship to the Father. Father, thank you for today, and thank you for all your blessings Thank you for the way that you've given to us so that we can give to others. Thank you for the way that you've blessed us and provided for us. And even in those times, God, when it just seemed to be so tough and so difficult, those that were still obedient to you, and through that, they saw your blessings. Father, give us wisdom as we use what you've given us 
to serve others. As a church, Lord, as we do things to uh, reach out into our community, to be a blessing to our community, to be ambassadors of you. Lord, give us wisdoms as we operate the different programs that you've asked us to operate, Lord, because of what you've given us. And so, Lord, we now take our tithes and offerings and offer it to you as a form of worship in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, do you like movies? Anybody like movies? Yeah, a few of us. You know, if you've been, if you're around me for any length of time, you're going to discover that I just love movies. I just the the idea of a movie just excites me. In fact, Britain and my first date was a movie, and one of our favorite things to do is go to a movie in the afternoon, skip dinner, and just have popcorn for dinner as we enjoy a good movie. movie? Oh, what's my favorite movie? Hunt for Red October. Another one of my favorite movies, because you jumped ahead of me and I wasn't going to talk about that one. <laughs> but another one of my favorite movies, and it's right up there. The reason why it's Hunt for October, that was my first date movie with my wife. So now you can see why it's up there, right? <laughs> my second favorite movie is called Mission Impossible. Have you heard of this movie? Yeah, we've all heard of this movie, right? Mission Impossible. It is one of my favorite ones. In fact, whenever it pops up on my feed in Netflix or Paramount or wherever it is, I am drawn to it, to watch over and over and over again. In fact, I've seen them all multiple times. That's just how much I love them. And when my oldest daughter was learning piano, her piano teacher had her learn the theme song for Mission Impossible. And I just love this. And whenever I would hear her start to plunk away on the piano playing the Mission Impossible theme song, I would come running from wherever I was in the house going dun, 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 dun. And she's like, Dad! I just love it so much. And it's not that the story is so great or profound. It's not that the acting is that terrific. It's not that the stunts, which are mind-blowing, are that captivating. It is the premise behind the movie. It's the premise behind the movie that gets me all the time. It's this idea of having a mission, of having a purpose that is so great that it's gonna change everything. That's what I love about that movie. It changes everything, the missions that they're put on. And I think as people, we are drawn to things like that because deep down, we have a desire within us to be involved in something that is greater than ourselves to be involved in a mission or to have a purpose. And the reason why I say this is because we spend billions of dollars every year watching movies, reading books, watching shows that are all about purpose and mission. The biggest movies over the last decade have not been rom-coms. They have been movies that are focused on mission. Even Barbie, and I have watched it, has a mission. My girls made me. But it has, Barbie has a mission to change something about their world. Even Godzilla and King Kong, which I watched yesterday with Britain's nephews, has a mission to save the world. Now that's not a recommendation for a movie, that's just an example that you can watch. But all of our entertainment speaks to this mission, to this purpose. And I think deep down inside all of us, we have this longing, this desire to give ourselves to something more than just the day-to-day jobs that we do. We have a desire to be on purpose. We have a desire to be on mission. In fact, this is the way God created us to be. And that's what I wanna talk to you about today. I wanna talk to you about an invitation that God is giving to you and to me to live on mission with him. And to do this, we're gonna look at a, a, a man named Abram who first appears in Genesis chapter 12. If you have your Bibles, turn with me to Genesis chapter 12. This was written a long time ago. It's about a man who lived over 3,000 years ago. And in the story of Abram, we discover both the mission that Abram was given, but also the mission that God is given to us. You see, here's what we need to realize is that you were meant for more. You were meant for more than what your life is right now. And we're gonna discover that by looking at the life of Abram. 
Genesis 12 begins this way. It says, the Lord said to Abram, go from your country, your people, and your father's household to the land I will show you. So Abram is invited, and this is often we call this passage the, uh, the call of Abram. And the reason why we call it the call of Abram is because he's being invited to do something different. He's being called from where he was to go to somewhere else. And he's called to leave his country, to leave his people, to leave his father's household. And here's what we need to understand. Whenever you hear the call of God in your life, it will always lead to change. It will always lead to breaking with something and embracing something new, to letting go of what was and embracing something new. The call of God always does that to our life. When we first begin to follow Jesus, we are called to follow Jesus. And he invites us to give up the old way of living and embrace something new. We heard about that last week. And as we engage or as we seek to discover the purpose for which we were created to live in this world, there's gonna have to be a change in the way we live. A breaking with what was and an embracing of something that God is calling us into. For Abram, this call to leave his country, to leave his father's household, to leave his people, this was a radical thing that took place. This was a radical calling. For us today, this isn't as big of a deal. Because for some of us, we've gone away to university. We know what it's like to move away from our family of origin and live somewhere else, whether it's for university, whether it's for a job, or whether it's just because we'd like to live somewhere where it doesn't snow 365 days a year, right? We all understand this. In fact, when we move away from some place, we are still connected to the people that were there. We're still connected to our people. We're still connected to our family. We FaceTime with them. We message with them. And so Abram, though, did not have that luxury. And so for him to respond to this call of God in his life was seriously a break from what was an embracing of something new. And it was radical. You see, to leave one's people group was to give up all of your social economic support, all of your security, all of your resources. You see, Abram, and we'll see this in a moment when I describe what his family looked like. Abram lived in an extended family group. Now, some of us know what that looks like, right? Because maybe grandma and grandpa live with us, or maybe we have some extended family that live with us, but no, 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 you don't understand it the way that Abram does. You see, Abram's extended family would have been at the smallest 40 people, but probably more likely over 100. And so for Abram to leave his country, to leave his people, to leave his father's household was to leave all of that behind. And some of you think, well, I just want to get away from my in-laws. Of course, that would be a good thing. But Abram, there, this was not a good thing. You see, there's safety in numbers. And so to leave that family of origin, that household that he was a part of, was to give up all of the safety and security that came with that. To give up that family was to give up all of the social and emotional support that they would have had as a family. If you've ever moved to another city, you probably know what this means. In 2003, Britton and I moved with our three kids from Regina to Calgary. And the first year that we were there when we celebrated our first anniversary, I remember going to the, the Cheesecake Cafe in that first year, that first anniversary after we moved, and sitting there and enjoying our anniversary, and there were our three little kids with us as well. Because we didn't know anybody in the city of a million people. And we had no, ba no babysitters to look after the kids. We had no support structure. Abraham would have given that up as well. And then Abram would have given up all of the resources that his father had, that his extended family had. And so for Abram to move, to follow this call of God in his life was radical, as it meant breaking from everything that he had. And you know what? Our story is a lot like Abram's story. Because you and I are called to break from what was and to live differently. If we are gonna to respond to the call of God, we're gonna to have to change the way that we live. We're gonna to have to change the things that we do. The challenge is, is that often we don't respond like Abram, we respond like Abram's father. 
We read about Abram's father in the two verses before the one that I just read to you. In chapter 11, verses 31 and 32, we read about Abram's father. Listen to to this. It says, Terah took his son Abram, his grandson Lot, son of Haran, and his daughter-in-law Sarah, the wife of his son Abram, and together they set out from Ur of the Chaldeans to go to Canaan. But when they came to Haran, they settled there. And Terah lived 205 years, and he died in Haran. You see, it wasn't just Abram that heard the call of God in his life. Actually, Abram's dad heard the call in his life as well. And his dad collected up his family and moved from Ur of the Chaldeans to Haran and stopped. He got halfway from where God was calling him. God was calling him from Ur of the Chaldeans to go all the way to Canaan, which will be later called in the scriptures the Promised Land. And Terah gets halfway to the promised land and stops. And I think sometimes we do that. We hear the, God, the call of God in our life and we begin to change things about our lives. We begin to change things, but then we run up against something. Something that we don't wanna change, something we don't wanna let go of and we stop halfway. We stop in the promised land before we get to the promised land. We stop in Haran. Tell me, are you living in Haran or are you living in the promised land? Terah hears God's voice but only trusts God to go halfway there. You see, whenever you hear God's voice, whenever you hear the call of God in your life, it's gonna mean breaking with something that was in order to embrace something new. And we have trouble doing that. We say to God, I'll do this far. And when it comes to embracing our purpose and our mission in life, we're gonna have to break with things. We're gonna have to let go of things, things that we have long held dear. It may mean moving out of St. Albert. (laughs) But we say, oh no, God, I won't do that. Or maybe we say to God, okay, maybe I'll cross the Hende. That's far enough, God. No further. Okay, God, maybe I will go somewhere as long as it's in Alberta, but don't make me go over those mountains, God. Don't make me go east of the Alberta border, God, please. And we go halfway to Haran, but not the whole way to the promised land. And in order for us to discover the purpose and the mission that God has for us, we need to go all the way. And that's gonna mean giving up things. Giving up ways of living that are enjoyable and comfortable. Giving up relationships. Giving up things, breaking with what was in order to embrace something that was new. We have trouble with that. We have trouble following God into the mission he has for us. And for some of us, that mission may mean staying here in St. Albert, and for some of us, that may mean going to that scary land across the Hende, or for some, that may mean going much farther away, and we have trouble with that, because we like the things we have. We love the lives we have. But God is calling you to something more. I have some friends, and they're, they're serving in a uh, Middle Eastern country in a country where when they leave the country, the number of Christians drops a percentage point. We're part of a family of churches called the Christian Missionary Alliance, and that missions part says that we want to reach people who are far from God. And so we send out collectively as a church of 400 churches, we send out international workers to nations where there are less than 2% of the people who have ever heard the name of Jesus spoken. My friends are there. They're over retirement age now. Because they went as international workers, they have another job that they do full time, but in all of their other spare time, you know what they do? They tell people about Jesus. And they have to do it very carefully because they can be kicked out. And they're over retirement age, it's time for them to come home and to live a retirement life. But they're staying there, why? Because there's nobody to replace them. You see, I think there's a lot of people that are stuck in Haran when God is calling them to someplace else. 400 churches, you think we could come up with two new international workers to this country, wouldn't you? People who are willing to do their careers in a different place. Often we get stuck in Haran. Are you stuck in Haran? The call of Abram is to actually go all the way, to give up everything. And for you and for me, it's a call to live differently 
to break from the way that we have been living, to begin to do things differently. Genesis 12 continues, it says this, I will make you into a great nation. This is God speaking to Abram. He says, I will make you into a great nation. I will bless you. I will make your name great, and you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you. Whoever curses you, I will curse. And all the people on earth will be blessed through you. Wouldn't you love to have those words spoken to over you by God? Wouldn't that be awesome to hear God say that to you? There's a number of different things that God promises in that promise, in this bigger promise. The first is, he says, I'm gonna make you into a great nation. Now, when we read the word nation in the Old Testament, we often think of political uh, entities. Whenever you see the word nation in the, New, in the Old Testament, it's often speaking about people groups, not nations, the way we think of nations. And so the promise here is that I will make you into a great people group. The problem is, is that Abram has no kids. The problem is, is that Abram is 75 years old and he and his wife are well past the age of having kids. And I think probably well past the age of wanting to have kids at 75, right? Can you imagine at 75 chasing around a toddler? My wife's nephews were here this week and uh, we love them, but boy, we're tired after four days. And I'm only in my 50s. He promises kids. He says, I will bless you. I will make your name great and you will be a blessing. I will make your name great. This is the promise of a reputation that people will look at Abram and say, wow, I wanna be like him. Wow, he is such a, a man of integrity. He is such a good person. The challenge is, is remember, Abram is 75 years old and reputations are built over a lifetime, not in a moment. And at 75 years of age, Abram has left behind Ur of the Chaldeans where he would have had a reputation as a young man. He's moved to Haran with his father and then he's left behind Haran as well. So any reputation that's built over a lifetime is gone and at 75, God says, I'm gonna give you a great reputation. Well, how is that possible when a reputation is built over a lifetime, not in a moment? And he says, you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you. Whoever curses you, I will curse. And all people on earth will be blessed through you. He says, I'm gonna make it so that everyone on earth, people you know, people you don't know, benefit because of you. You will be a blessing to all nations. What amazing promises these are. And the utterly amazing thing is, God fulfills every single one. God fulfills every single one. There's two parts to this blessing or this promise that God gives. The first part, uh, if you were to have a page, if you're taking notes, draw a line across that page. And above the line, here's what I want you to write. Abram is blessed. You see, there are two parts to this. Above the line, the part that is God's part, and the part below the line, which is your part, which is Abram's part. And you see, you will be blessed. That's the promise that God makes to Abram. Why? So that you will be a blessing. And Abram has made this incredible promise with two parts. The top line, what God will do, and the bottom line, what Abram has to do. And you see, God was gonna do all of these things for Abram, not because Abram was such a good guy, and not because God liked Abram more than anyone else, or because Abram was such a good person. God was gonna do this because he wanted to bless the world. You see, God blesses Abram to bless the world. Abram was blessed to be a blessing. Abram was meant to bless. This is the promise that God makes. I will bless you, and you will bless all people. And this promise is passed down generation after generation. Jacob, or sorry, Isaac, his son, receives this promise from God. It's repeated again in his life. Jacob receives this promise. It's repeated again in his life. Joseph, this is the third generation down now, receives this promise, and it's repeated again and again through Genesis to Abram. 
and it's repeated again and again through subsequent generations. In fact, a thousand years after Abram lived, we read a prophet speaking for God who says this. He says, just as you, Judah and Israel, Judah and Israel, these are the descendants of Abram. This is the people group, the nation that God promised. And he says, Israel and Judah, descendants of Abram, just as you have been cursed among the nations. You see, they had done things that had gone against God's holy way of living. And because of that, they had been attacked and they had been beaten down. They'd not received the blessing of God because they hadn't lived in relationship with God. And he says, just as you have been cursed among the nations, so I will save you. This is God speaking. I will save you and you will be, what? A blessing. You see, God saves Judah and Israel. But he doesn't just do it because of some promise long ago. He does it because the intention of saving Israel and Judah is that they would be a blessing to the nations around them, that all the world would be blessed. And this continues after generation after generation, this promise of Abraham is passed down. In fact, we get to the New Testament and in Matthew 1 verse 1, the author writes about Jesus and he is very keen on helping us to understand that Jesus is the ultimate blessing. You see, he writes this, he says, this is the genealogy, the family tree of Jesus the Messiah, the son of David, the son of Abraham, who we know from Genesis 12 was first named Abram. You see, Jesus is the fulfillment of the promise to Abram. Jesus is the ultimate blessing. Everything that was promised in Genesis 12 is fulfilled in Jesus. Jesus who came into the world to bless you and me. How are we blessed? Well, we're blessed by his death and his resurrection, which we celebrated last week. That Jesus died for the forgiveness of our sins, the things that we have done that have hurt relationship with the person next to us, that have hurt relationship with God. That Jesus died on the cross so that we could experience forgiveness and reconciliation, both with God and the people around us. Jesus blesses us, but that blessing, which is the top line, has a bottom line and we are intended to be blessings. You see, Jesus doesn't save us just because we're good people. Actually, we're not good people, we're sinners. Jesus doesn't save us just because he loves us, and he does. But he saves us so that we would be a blessing to everyone else that we meet. Jesus is the ultimate fulfillment of the promise of Abram. Tell me, Have you received the blessing that Jesus offers? The New Testament continues. In fact, a man by the name of Paul writes in a letter that he wrote to the church in Galatia. He says this, understand then that those who have faith are children of Abraham. Those who have faith, those who belong to Christ, those who have put their faith, who declare that Jesus is the leader and savior of their life. Paul writes that they are children of Abraham. You see, what happened when you first believed is your sins are forgiven. And then Paul says in another book, in the book of Romans, he compares us to taking a branch from our family of tree, the family we grew up in, the family who formed us, that that branch is taken off and it is grafted into a new tree, the tree of Abram. And with that grafting, we become children of Abram. We often talk about being called children of God, but here he says, you're children of Abram with all of the rights and privileges that you inherit by being a child of someone. And you see, the promise of Abram is not just for someone else. It's for you if you are a follower of Jesus. In fact, in Galatians 3, Paul writes this. He says, if you belong to Christ, then you are Abram's seed, you're Abram's children, and heirs according to the promise. What's that promise? That you are blessed to be a blessing. It is that top line and bottom line promise. That God will bless you so that you can bleed bless others. You see, you are blessed to be a blessing. You are meant to bless. You know, oftentimes though, we forget about the bottom line. 
We love that top line blessing. That idea of that God is going to bless us. It's like, God, yeah, come on, God, let's bless me. Come on, God, give me more. Please bless me. But we forget that bottom line blessing. I know I do. You can ask my wife. She'll tell you how much I forget it. And we always have to remember that we are blessed in order to bless others. You are saved in order to help others find the same saving and reconciliation that you have experienced. You are blessed to bless others. Everything you have been given, your life here in St. Albert and all that it involves, or if you're from across the Hende, God bless you. No, I'm just kidding. We love you, but wherever you're from, Hannah's from across the Hende. Wherever you're from, God has placed you there to be a blessing. God has blessed you to be a blessing. And there's, Paul writes in another letter, he says, God has given you everything you need and enough to share. That is that top and bottom line blessing. Tell me, are you a bottom line Christian? Or are you simply a top line Christian? And I think a lot of times, a lot of us here are guilty of living as a top line Christian. And Jesus invites you to discover a new way of living, to break from what was and embrace something new, to discover your purpose, your mission in life, which is to be a bottom line Christian because you're blessed to be a blessing. So how should we respond to what we've heard today? Well, I'm gonna give you some ideas and you decide which one fits best or maybe they all fit best with you. Over the next weeks, we're gonna introduce you to an acronym. The acronym is the word BLESS, B-L-E-S-S. And each letter in that acronym stands for something. Here's what I want you to do. This is the first thing that you can do in response. I want you to commit to being a part of this series, to being here on Sunday, or if life happens and you have to be away, like I'm gonna be away next Sunday, life happens. Then tune in to our live stream, wherever you are, or tune in later on in the week. Be a part of this series. I want you to commit to that and to discovering this purpose, what it means to be a bottom line Christian over the coming weeks. I want you to discover this acronym that we're gonna teach, which is BLESS, which stands for this. The B stands for begin with prayer. You see, every great act of God begins with prayer. Every great movement of the gospel begins with prayer. L. Listen with care. One of the greatest needs that you and I have is to actually be heard. And so we're gonna encourage you to listen, to listen not just to the people around you, but actually to listen to the Spirit while you're listening to them. What I call listening with two ears. One to the Spirit, one to the person you're with. And letting the Spirit guide the conversations and the actions and what it is that you do. You see, when we listen, we show that we care. E stands for eat together. Hey, anybody wanna do that one? Eat together? When we eat together, we create space for the kingdom of God to come. And so I'm gonna invite you to take time to plan meals where you eat with someone who is far from God but close to you and see if the kingdom of God comes into their life in just a little way. S, serve with love. Serve with love. Serve with sacrificial love that asks nothing in return that serves that person only for the sake of expressing the love, the radical love that Jesus has built into you. Serve with love. And then once you've earned the right, share your story. Share your story of what Jesus has done in your life, of who he is and how he has changed your life. These are the blessed practices. These are five simple everyday practices that you can build into your everyday rhythms that will actually begin to change the world. And we're gonna invite you to be a part of that. But this week, what I want you to do, when you came in, you received a bookmark. On that bookmark are the the five blessed practices spelled out for you if you forgot what they are already. On the back are five lines. Here's what I want you to do this week. Go away, take this bookmark with you, and ask Jesus, Jesus, who is it that is far from you but close to me who you want me to be a blessing to. There are people all around you who are far from God but close to you. 
and just ask Jesus to open your eyes to them and then begin to fill out the lines there. Just five people, that's all. This isn't about making them a project, okay? This is about loving them so much that you wanna bless them just because God has blessed you. That you wanna bless them in the same way that God has blessed you. So fill out this and then begin to pray for them. And come back next week as we begin to dig deep into each of the five practices. Can you imagine what might happen if all of us here today had five people that God put on our heart, people that are far from him but close to us, people who he put us in relationship with in the places where we live, learn, work, and play? If he, we would just start to pay attention and begin to actually live like blessings, to begin to live for the benefit of them instead of the comfort of ourselves. Five simple practices. This can change the world. And I wonder what might happen if we all leaned into it this spring and we began to bless the people around us. I wonder if we might experience a summer of blessing. Let's pray. Jesus, we love you. And Jesus, we admit that sometimes we have been top line Christians, receiving all the benefits, receiving all the blessings that you have for us, but ignoring the bottom line. Jesus, I confess this, and I think some of my friends are confessing this as well. And Jesus, we wanna be bottom line Christians. Christians who receive the blessing that you give us in order to bless the people around us. We recognize that everything you've given us has been given for a purpose. That you've given us more than we need, enough to share. And so Jesus, whether that be our time, our talents, our treasures, or just the great story of who you are in our lives, may we be people who bless the people around us. And may your kingdom come and may this world be blessed just as you've promised. In your name we pray, amen. Just get y'all to stand with us as we just sing this last song together.
And we thank you that you partner with us and that you use us to bring your kingdom here to earth, Lord. We're so grateful for you and all you've done for us, Lord. Help us to just pass it on to others as we bless them. Amen. You may be seated. So, God blesses us so that we can... Oh, that was weak. God blesses us so that we can... Oh, I think they're getting it, Pastor Kirk. So don't forget to take your card... Put the names on the back of those that you're going to be praying for, those that you want to bless. Because this is so important. And then take it and put it someplace prominent in, so that you can see it every day. If you put it in your devotional Bible, your packet, put it on your fridge, put it on your desk. Put it someplace where you can be reminded every day. And then also pick up a packet of the questions that as we go through this series that you can do in your small groups. Folks, God is going to use you in this season as we go through this series, especially as we come into summer. What a great time to get together with neighbors and coworkers and friends. But in the summertime when we can barbecue together and do all those fun things, block parties and neighborhood things. Because here's what's going to happen. By this fall, there are going to be people that have committed their life to Jesus Christ and become part of his family because of the blessing that you are going to be in the areas where you live, learn, work, and play. Because of your obedience and your faithfulness to what God is asking you to do through this series. So I'm really excited about this. Now, uh, in just a moment, we're going to be sending each other off with our closing benediction. But if you're new with us, and we're so glad that you're here, we have something that's called Stack in 10. And over by the welcome desk, uh, just in behind the welcome desk, you can go over and there'll be a couple folks there ready to answer any questions you might have and uh, get you pointed in the right direction uh, of what you're looking for. Also, if you would like special prayer following the service, you're welcome to come up to the front and we'll have some people, Pastor Kirk, Pastor Lisa up here, available to pray together with you. Now, would you stand and we're going to send each other off with a benediction. And after we've done the benediction, I want you just to turn to somebody beside you and just say to them, one of the greatest sermons I ever heard in my life was this morning. <laughs> all right? And then if you want to tell Pastor Kirk that to you again afterwards, but... All right, Holy Spirit, as we go and be the church in the places where we live, learn, work, and play, may we begin to live as a blessing people who are meant to bless. Amen. God bless you.